to get mixed up. All right. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the City of Farmers Branch Study Session meeting. It is January 4th, 2022. The time is 3.30 p.m. I uh, just want to wish everyone a happy new year and also wish everyone in the community, not only in our residents, but businesses, people that are enjoying our retail and everything else, a happy, healthy, and prosperous 22, hopefully much better than, than the last two. Um, so with that, we will begin with A1, discuss regular agenda items. Councilmember Driscoll, do you have anything? Um, for the consent agenda? Just any, anything yeah, on the radio? I'd agenda? like, uh, just, uh, I had a conference with Charles and discussed this, but I'd like a little bit more clarification on I-8. Um, I don't know if this question is really more for engineering or sustainability, but I just wanted to get a little bit more clarification about the the reason for the regulations and definitions changes, and if that's to bring us more in line with uh, state laws and regulations on stormwater and the treatment of it. So again, I don't know exactly who to address that to. Um, yes, uh, so it's just to update, define, and just make sure we're more clear for existing regulations. It's not really going any further, it's just updating for the state permit and national permit, so they're all in line. But is it also so we can take care of violations of the yes. people dumping stuff that goes into the stormwater, that goes into our water system? Yeah, it makes it very clear that we can inspect and clean up and, and address the issue. Um, it just makes that really clear. So that also helps with education. We can just tell people, yes, we can right. do this. So it helps on education, but it's also a tool that we can do enforcement. Enforcement, absolutely. That we couldn't do before. Very. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, it just makes it very clear. That okay. We, yeah. Okay. The Thank you. I think the attorneys are happy that we're okay. being very clear. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. One, one thing along those lines, one, one very common thing, and you might mention when I was reading through there, my reading of it is, you know, for the average resident, they're not, it, this is not going to really impact them. Other than those folks that may have a practice of um, backflowing or uh, actually emptying their pool, my understanding is that it is because a lot of people, not a lot, but there are some people that just drain that into the alley and that would not be allowed, correct? Correct. And that's already something that we address. This just makes it very clear. If a business would happen to decide they want to tap into the sewer line or with chemical, you know, they, it's, it just makes it very clear that we can inspect. So it's it's very much towards commercial businesses, those type of things, yeah. Thank you. Councilmember Merritt. Thank you, Mayor. I have a couple, I have a couple items. Um, the first one is I-3 this evening, the uh, four patrol vehicles for the police department. Um, Chief, I did notice that the uh, price of the Tahoes went up to almost 12%, so we have, we're incurring more costs. But could you describe for us the uh, uplift process and what the cost figures are generally incorporated in that? I'm going to turn that to Kevin. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. Uh, sure. Tom, <laughs> Higgs, Tom Higgs, Fleet Operations Manager. So yes, sir, you're right. The uh, titles did go up a little bit in price. The, uh, and the biggest part of the uh, cost now in the up it is the uh, new equipment because the platform of the title actually changed. So the things that we would normally recycle, the uh, prisoner partition, um, the consoles, the equipment inside is all going to have to be new. Um, and then the only thing we're recycling right now is basically the electronics. So your uh, camera package, your radar systems, and your radio systems. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that clarification. That's all I had on that item. I have a couple others. Uh, on I-4, uh, the Community Development Grant. Um, Charles, I think it's important to know that we did budget for this accordingly in the Capital Improvement uh, Program. And so uh, this is money that we had targeted and, and we received. So I think that's, a, that's good. And I, it did take me a little bit to find it in the miscellaneous but it was there at first i thought it might be in the enterprise fund or in one of the utility replacement programs but it shows up clearly in the miscellaneous capital improvement so i just wanted to make that notation that we did uh, accommodate for that so um, moving on 
um, on I-5 uh, on these utility improvements, do they actually show up in uh, utility replacements or the I and I repairs? I didn't. This, this <coughs> utility replacements. Utility replacements. Thank you. And then on I seven, uh, once again, this looks like it falls under our capital improvement for the lights of two hundred and twenty-five thousand that we budget annually. Is coming in underneath that. I think that's a good to be noticed and recognized. And Mayor, that's all I had. Oh, I apologize, I have one more. On I-10, the redistricting commission, the one thing I didn't notice is if we had any protocols that we would be incorporating related to uh, council attendance to those meetings, I think it's important that we at least discuss that on what, if we treat this as we are treating every other board, that we would expect the council to allow that commission to do their work. Um, perhaps we could be in attendance at the very first meeting, but I think we need to be clear about our protocols going forward and allow them to do their work. That would be my assumption, um, but <clears throat> it will be an open meeting. Uh, people can attend, council members included, should they so choose. Uh, I believe under the Open Meetings Act, there will be one section for public comments if, if needed and he will be addressed that after that. Uh, no comments from the public, which would include us as well, that would allow that committee to do its work. But we, we need to know if, if you're all gonna show up. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Understood. Okay. Even, so if all, even if all of you show up and sit there, don't say anything, we still need Okay, so as a, a point to that, um, is Amy and the chair roll out the schedule for these meetings, uh, please circulate it to the council. Uh, and then please let Amy know if you're going to attend so that if three or more of us show up, we can post. That's all. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Yeah. Sounds good. Councilmember Lynn. Yeah. No? No. Okay. Councilmember Williams. Councilmember Ritano. Um, just one on I-10, point of clarification. Um, so I did notice that on the listing of members, we do have the alternates listed, so I'm assuming Again, point of, point of clarification, the alternates are still able to attend every single meeting. They just don't have voting privileges, just like our other alternates, correct? Correct. Okay, just want to I mean, make the sure. The intent behind the alternates is to fill it's not going to be the same way that it is on our normal boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. I believe the intent is these are the first five to be selected should sure. one member from y'all's appointees, a, you know, if they're not showing up and needs to be reappointed, um, you know, it comes from y'all's list and y'all's alternate, or uh, if they have to step down for whatever reason, it just makes it quicker to get someone in. So, yeah, you know, they should attend. Um, yeah, I, would say, I would just make that distinction because one of the things that I would hate for us to happen is not to make that distinction that we expect them to attend because should something happen and somebody have to move or what, what have you, it'd be nice to have them all privy to what's been going on so that way they don't start from scratch. So just wanted to make that recommendation. Thank you, sir. That is all I have. Perfect. All right. All of my questions have been answered by Charles as well. Uh, so we will move on to A2, receive an update on the boardwalk development. Mr. Lynn. Afternoon. So in October of 2021, Richard Rawlings of Fast and Loud Fame <coughs> announced a new Gas Monkey Live relocating to the boardwalk. That was exciting news for Farmers Branch. However, it does require some site plan adjustments and we thought it would be good early on to get in front of council and have the developer come forward and kind of explain why this is a benefit to the project, uh, what we need to do in terms of uh, parking and, and the site plan alignment, and then what's the new timing for this because I think there's gonna be some, some adjustments in the, in the completed project. So Michael Beatty with representing Centurion is gonna be with us and kind of walk us through that. And I believe he has a few other guests with us. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's nice to be back. I think this is uh, round five for revising the boardwalk site plan, so please don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> we are very, very excited about the Gas Monkey concept coming here. It is going to be a tremendous, 
traffic draw. I have Robert Hall and Christopher Zuffi with me today. They're responsible for Merdod's restaurant group and they work directly with Mr. Rawlings, so they'll go through the actual concept uh, and where we are with the architects. I wanted to briefly update the overall site and where we are in the progress with the other buildings. Um, five, four, and three are under construction. We received our finish out permit to go for the restaurant interiors on building five right at the end of the year. And Christopher is responsible for getting that open, so any questions, <laughs> defer to him. Um, and then four, the shell's about finished, and three, we're laying the brick. Building two is not moving forward at this time. I've done the uh, site improvements, all the parking lots in as you see it. And then building one is what we're proposing to reconfigure for the gas monkey concept. Uh, it will bring live music venue, but this is south of 635, away from everybody that lives on the north side of Mercer Crossing, so hopefully <laughs> there's no opposition there. And uh, again, it'll be a tremendous, tremendous traffic draw. We are going to try to work with uh, the parking lot. You see a hatched area in the upper corner. I don't know if we'll be successful. Uh, Mr. Bentley pointed out to me about the ordinance and modifying a floodway versus a floodplain. That is floodplain. And part of our process for bringing forward the uh, actual amendment to the site plan will include an updated parking study. So one way or another, we will address the parking. Um, we would love to have a parking problem. That means we're very successful. But we understand today that what you're being presented does not park the way it's currently configured. So I'm going to have to work that out with the uh, traffic engineer. And with that, I'll hand over to Robert. Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, was planning on bringing uh, Mr. Rollins here today, but unfortunately, he's got a bit of a bug. and. Uh, Apparently there's something going around that's uh, <laughs> preventing him from being here today, sadly. Um, he is excited and look forward to the next time we might meet with each other to uh, seeing you all in person. Um, the Gas Monkey concept was you know, a great success in Dallas prior to the pre uh, pandemic. Um, I do spend quite a bit of time with uh, Mr. Rollins at his headquarters there down on Merrill Road, which is predominantly focused on his merchandising and actual automotive business, along with his uh, studio where he shoots various podcasts and uh, television pieces and things of that nature. Um, he does have uh, several things he was going to discuss today that are exciting about his um, new alignments as far as television goes and streaming goes. His uh, internet uh, fame obviously precedes him. He's still one of the most successful YouTube guys, I think, in, in, the, uh, in the sector, in the automotive sector. So, um, for example, when he did this announcement, I think we wound up with almost half a million likes and views, which is really exciting, not only for the concept, but also for, um, you know, Mercer uh, and, and obviously this new uh, great concept. Uh, when we started to lay it out and, and talked about all the ideas that we'd like to include if Richard had his druthers and Murdad and, and, and me as uh, refined hospitality concepts, we, we got to a, a position fast where we realized we really had to do something substantial here. And we really appreciate you all working with us to uh, bring this you know, vision to fruition because it's really a culmination of all the things that Richard had already done the research for us, fortunately, with his first iteration. Um, so we feel that this layout, having the live music and this courtyard and then the uh, F&B, the food and beverage spaces, uh, not only on the rooftop and interior space, you know, a corporate, uh, you know, dining and event area space is really going to be able to get the breadth of his uh, audience to engage with the space uh, in many different ways. And, and one of the things that's really interesting about, you know, Richard's, you know, fans and followings, number one, he's, you know, obviously a, a, a Dallas, a, da a DFW guy. He's got a lot of local followings, but as he's traversed um, in his career into, uh, you know, an upper demographic. It's always amazing to me over there because you'll, you'll be with, there'll be Rolls Royce guys there and there'll be, you know, guys redoing pickup trucks and he, he embraces it all with the same enthusiasm. That's uh, a very exciting thing for us because this venue is, it has so much appeal, um, cross demographic, you know, cross, there's people who still fly into DFW for layovers and, and take the extra uh, time in their layover just so they can drive to Gas Monkey and get, grab a picture with Richard. So we think this is going to be a great draw, not only for us locally here in Dallas, but for um, travelers from all over his fan base, uh, which is really international. 
Uh, for those of you not as familiar with you know, Richard's work in television shows, for example, in Europe, there are several seasons behind where we were here, as television shows often do. So uh, you know, if you remember you know, David Hasselhoff from the 90s, he, once he fell out of fame, uh, you know, he was still a rock star in Germany for many years. So Richard's kind of in that zone right now where a lot of his fan base will fly to DFW on their way to somewhere else and then just come and try and um, get, a, uh, you know, get a, sight, a sighting of Richard. Uh, Richard's committed at this location to spend a lot of time there. Um, he's very excited to um, engage his fan base there. We were going to have a Richard Rollins happy hour. There's going to be a Richard Rollins table. Whenever he walks in the door, um, prices automatically fall into a, you know, a happy hour model. And so there's lots of really fun things planned. The interior of the space will be somewhat reminiscent of the, of the last venue as far as aesthetics and automotive pieces and all the things that Richard and his fans find you know, inter interesting and fun. The menu will be a little bit more expansive, not only in the beverage side, the bar side, but also in the, uh, the offerings will be uh, more expanded barbecue and Tex-Mex um, with some uh, new chef twists from the RHC uh, uh, chef and culinary team. So we believe that there's a lot of variety here on this site. Uh, if you want more of a you know quiet experience, if there is such a thing in yeah, Gas Monkey Land, we're making concessions that are a little more family oriented on the interior. The rooftop is designed to be uh, a rooftop bar where it's a little bit more beverage focused. And then obviously we'd like to have the entertainment uh, sector um, be you know very you know very engaging. We come up with these. Uh, suites, uh, much like a concert venue, but they're, they're made with shipping containers and so forth to keep forward in Richard's theme of the uh, automotive industrial. We also have made a plan to engage with this space uh, for corporate entertainment quite a bit. And in our uh, RHCC catering team, which is a, a large part of our operation, both social catering and in the hotel environment, we already have super heavy interest from our corporate clients um, to engage this space. So we're very excited to provide provide um, the community with a great new uh, venue that's really overarching in a lot more ways than the original Dallas or, uh, location was, which was doing not, about 19 million a year prior to the pandemic. So thank you very much. I have a question real quick. Yes, sir. Do you think that uh, with this venue set up the way it is that the Richard will, will or will consider uh, doing some of this podcast stuff from the venue itself? Absolutely. Um, that's a great point I should have touched on. Richard has a full-time production team, um, Sinjin and a few others who actually, so when you saw the, you know, we, we were doing donuts in there and I hit my head on the crossbar of that Mustang, the fateful afternoon, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, they, they will have a space there that's solely dedicated to him promoting and doing things from the, from the facility as well. Uh, especially in the rooftop and then Richard has his own suite for the concert piece that will he'll be doing a lot of um, you know hanging out with the acts filming that putting it on on the on his web platforms and obviously once his new shows come to fruition we're very hopeful that they'll be doing a lot of filming uh, in the location any other questions does anyone else have any questions Michael is it possible to go through the, the boards are really good but it's it's a little hard to see some of the pictures. Can we go through some of the graphics of the council? You can see those in the sure. room. And then also, um, my <clears throat> colleague Christopher Zilke is here, who really helps me in my role usher the projects through our architectural side and so forth. So he can speak to some of the particulars and the design layouts. Um, should you have any questions on the on the actual uh, build out process itself? Yeah, this is. Uh, Definitely still a work in progress. We obviously want you guys to sign off on it before we do a full submittal package. Um, but Bush Architects, who has been, can I scroll through a little bit? Um, uh, Bush Architects, who has been doing all the design, they are uh, busy at work and really just waiting for you guys to allow us to move on to the next steps. Um, like Rob said, definitely this rooftop bar was an addition that was not in any previous plans. Um, this build out will be significantly more expensive than any of the other buildings we've proposed. Um, the stage, while not completely covered, it's like a sky track, um, which will kind of help bridge that indoor outdoor, allow it to still be usable year round. Um, state of the art stage, sound system, um, 
full packet there. The total square footage of the interior restaurant on the level one, as you can see, is 12,000 square feet. The terrace bar is 1,000. Uh, the restaurant terrace, 4,200. The courtyard, 5,000. The stage is 2,000. All in all, it's 37,000 square feet. Not all of that under roof, but it is a big venue. Um, waterfront views, we wanted everybody, Richard really wanted everybody to be able to look out and kind of see the, the concert while also looking, <coughs> able to look at the, the water and the attractions. Um, a lot of open space, like I said, great views, outdoor dining, outdoor seating, which everybody knows is we have a good nine, ten months out of the year that you can uh, sit outside in Texas. Family friendly, like Rob spoke to. Um, it'll definitely, while we will have bands and entertainment and we do want to sell alcohol, we also during, want this to be a place where families can come to, neighborhoods that can come hang out and uh, bring their kids and enjoy the, uh, the venue. So it's very open, light, airy, but still has a lot of that kind of automotive feel. This is still probably missing some of the Richard Rollins Gas Monkey flavor that'll be layered in on it um, but great views great stage um, you know I think we can even do part of what Richard really wanted I'm sure I don't know if everybody's been to Lava Cantina but that was definitely one of his kind of models he knows those guys and his friends with them but it really kind of that footprint is uh, well incorporated um, where you have that stage but also dining I think that's it. Any questions there? Yes, Mr. Driscoll. Yes, I have a question. Um, I'm thinking you're probably going to have some de designated areas for businesses or organizations to have private events. Yes. Indoors be, and outdoors? Um, yes. Uh, so the, <coughs> the suites that are these kind of container, shipping containers that are here, we'll be able to separate those out, but inside you also have, so like here for small private events, but indoors there's private rooms, this uh, rooftop deck could be um, an outdoor venue if you wanted to partition that off, but inside as well we have break off rooms that will hold anywhere from 50 to 100 people. So definitely um, we are building it to be able to be partitioned out for corporate events. We'll, we'll need that to fill 37,000. Right. Square feet. Right. You mentioned that maybe when Richard walks in, that it's half price or happy hour pricing. Are you going to have a kind of year-round dynamic pricing model in terms of time of the year, the weather? I'll leave events? that to Rob. Absolutely. So you know, celebrating Richard's presence is something that you know we all felt the last uh, iteration uh, did not capitalize on well enough. So we've structured that a little bit more. Um, and, and to touch on your. Uh, your question about private, you know, private dining and uh, corporate dining. So a large arm of refined hospitality concepts. You know, we, we you know, in a different lane of our, of my life, we do all the food service for Southwest Airlines. We do the T-Mobile headquarters. We do. I have Exxon Mobil, uh, Schlumberger. So we have a lot of corporate clients, and we have sales teams uh, constantly working for catering and also corporate dining. And one of the things that we're going to do, be that this is such a centrally located location. We want to bring a lot of our business from um, our corporate clients and pitch this space for corporate engagement for this outdoor space for a lot of the, and the interest has already been extremely high um, in our contacts in those sectors so uh, we're very excited as far as the dynamic pricing model goes uh, Richard has a flair for the dramatic um, so there are about nine million ideas on the board right now that we've got down to about Three million. Uh, so I, my job is to get those down to about four. So I'll continue to do that as the year goes. But the one thing we're definitely settled on is, if he's there, that will be broadcast. We, um, you know, the last location, they almost kept it quiet because of the, you know, the height of his popularity. It got a little away from the operators. We feel so strongly that we want to celebrate. We want the community to know. We want um, everyone around to know when he comes and, and enhance the traffic through the space as we. Uh, go to you know make Mercer a success. So there will definitely be an automatic pricing change, you know, and certain certain specials throughout the time of the year. There will be large barbecues. He loves barbecues. He loves food trucks. So there will even be times when we have other offerings from outside that come in, and, and he engages with other you know other 
things from his life that he enjoys. Um, so yes, there's a lot on the table as far as uh, variations and promotions and seasonal happy hours and barbecues and chili cook-offs and taco competitions and he's got all kinds of, as a matter of fact, I think on either his Facebook or his Instagram as early as today he had a, a post out there with he's in a cowboy outfit, he's in a sombrero and he's in something else asking his fans to say which version of them they, they like the best. So we're, he's a great promoter and we're really excited at Refined Hospitality Concepts to frame him up to give him the loudest bullhorn we can for this new location now that we've all convinced uh, you know Murdad and <laughs> hopefully yourselves as well to let us really make uh, make this synonymous with Richard Rollins headquarters versus his uh, you know former location or even the Merrill Road automotive location and by the way his enthusiasm for this is through the roof he's, he's he was very disappointed that uh, he couldn't come today um, and, and I guarantee you you will see him in the near future and he can uh, expound more on what his plans are, but we will be do our best to support them. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'm excited about it. Yeah, thank you. I'm we smiling are behind my mask. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Sounds very good. Thank you. Council Member Rotana. Um, love the concept. I agree with you, Michael. It's our Mike, it's a it's a way better location than our than our former um, for something like this. Um, my only concern was the parking, but um, I feel like that's something that you are already addressing. Um, I guess my only question is like what's where do we go from here? What does the planning process look like, and what does the timeline look like? Because I know there are certain um, things in place that we need to amend, and so that may be a, a staff question if we if we have that. But I would love to to hear about what that timeline looks like from someone. When do you plan to submit? Um, <laughs> well, we, we wanted to receive feedback today sure. and make sure it was warmly received before we continue the process. I'm probably 45, 60 days away from a formal submittal. Sure. Um, the other open items, I think, would get wrapped up before that time frame. And then I know we have to come back as the complete recent little detail site sure. plan change uh, yep. with the parking plan. Yep. So 45, 60 days, formal to the middle, go through the process during the summer. Okay. Maybe under construction by September, October, if we're successful. And how long, and I know it's it's ballpark at this point, because there's, so there's so much to it, but... Do you have any sense of, based on who we have here, um, how long it would take for construction before? Six we to eight months. Uh, the, the, the good thing about this is that there's nothing in the finish outs that is extremely long lead times. Okay. It's fairly, you know, I mean, Richard does half that stuff himself and <laughs> brings out his, you know, welding equipment and old cars. And so, it, and we're not, it's not a fine dining restaurant where I'm waiting sure. eight months for a specialty tile. Yeah. Um, so the construction should be fairly streamlined and go through quite easily. No, I think that's great. Um, no, thank you so much for that. <laughs> just wanted to have an idea of what the timeline looks like. And I will say, just as a last comment, there's so much of this type of stuff in Dallas proper and in North, well, I call Northern Market for work, but in Frisco, what have, what have you, this area needs something like this. So I'm just, and we've seen it because we've heard from our constituency that we want more entertainment type venues. And so um, I'm excited about it um, and just um, hope to just continue to get um, get more information. So thank you so much. I think one of the things that I know Robert was gonna mention, I think this place is important, not just as a standalone venue, but for the success of all the other restaurants that are there. I think oh, it's gonna drive huge sure. traffic um, to that end. Richard, the primos in building five that we're yes. um, <coughs> starting finish out next week, the shell is done. Um, he is going to partner with us on kind of a Primo's Gas sure. Monkey Cantina mashup. We haven't announced that quite yet, so if but, you don't, that maybe that sombrero thing. So we, didn't hear that. Earlier. we didn't hear that. We didn't hear that. Maybe but, related to that, maybe not. But he, we're yeah. going to have fun with sure it, and it I think Richard and, and everybody is going to yeah. help the rest of these venues do really well. And also, I think the hotels that are right next to the, to that mm -hmm. could also be a good. It'd be good for the hotel spaces too, just because having. You know the Omni there, which is something else. But um, with that, all that space, being able to have something like this to draw in people and the proximity to the, to the airport, I just think all in all, it, 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 it's coming into fruition to something that I think will benefit everyone in the Absolutely. area. Absolutely, I, I I know that Richard really loves this location, largely because of its proximity to both 35, 635, and just how it brings all of Dallas together. Yeah. So, okay. thank you so much. That's Mayor Williams. Um, I I just want. Uh, to echo 
uh, Councilmember Ratana's um, timeline, um, but for for me, you can definitely consider from your District Three representative. Uh, this is a warm welcome. So we're we're very excited about the project, and we're very excited um, to have heard the announcements and and all of that. How is this going to impact the develop the rest of that development? Is is are we looking at a delay in timeline on those? On, on building five, four, three, and two? Five, four, three, no, two. Two. <clears throat> they have to work out the parking for building two okay. because of the extra size of this building. So that'll be on hold until we resolve the parking. Okay. But five, four, and three five, four, should three, be. Um, should, they actually should have stay on. <clears throat> we have fully submitted approved plans for mm -hmm. five. That construction will start next week, more than likely. Um, four is being drawn, it's at MEP. So that should be submitted within the next 30, 45 days. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. Three's open right now. Three's open, yeah. And then again, just to echo the sentiment that as far as building five goes, Richard is now joining that fanfare. So that'll be our soonest to open, obviously, and we'll get Richard's you know, uh, brands involved right on the front end of this. So we just feel that this is such an opportunity for the success of the rest of the concepts that are going in there. Um, for sure. And then we're going to have a head start with his now agreement and enthusiasm to get involved with us in Building 5 and get this limited time only model. He won't stay involved in the DNA of the primos that we're uh, putting in Building 5 and the pizza parlor we're putting there. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be, kind of be a precursor to tease out the eventuality of this of this site. Okay. And then it'll revert to a traditional uh, primos MX kitchen model. Well, that's exciting, guys. We're 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 thrilled about the um, at least the, the concerns <coughs> from our di my district are uh, are, are really excited about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Mayor. Do you have anything? Okay. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I just I'll echo the other comments. Excited about the opportunity that you guys are bringing. Obviously, you're looking at the challenges of parking and all of that that comes with that and making sure that Building 2 actually, I hope, <clears throat> gets onto the ground at some point as parking is resolved in order to satisfy this particular project. So, yes, sir. Right, good. just want to make sure that it's resounding from the people at the table here. Oh, do you have more that you want to? OK, well, raise your hand. <coughs> Having spent a lot of time over Gas Monkey in the past and being a bike rider, uh, so I know how crowded and get with bikes at some time yes at some some of the concerts and whatnot so I just want to make sure y'all are taking that into account for example parking for bikes as well as for vehicles uh, cars that come in because uh, that will I think at some point create a problem and it may create a problem for the other restaurants that are there in fact that all Richards people are taking up parking for everybody else so I'm you know I'm hoping that we have a good enough amount of parking uh, for the whole development but uh, yeah I'm really excited about this and and give it us a huge plus uh, for our city to have this so thank you thank you uh, just want to make sure that it's loud and clear for them that we have no concerns with this concept and allow them to go ahead and move forward with submitting 100%. okay excellent perfect so mr. Beatty do you anticipate needing to amend the developers agreement anyway so this exceeds our square footage, uh, and building three, four, and five are covered in our DA developers agreement. So we're we figure out the parking um, twenty thousand square feet over where we were supposed to be. <coughs> Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Next is A three. Discuss future agenda items. Uh, for me, I want to bring up potentially is something that comes on the back of the conversation we're going to have at our strategic planning session uh, surrounding smart cities and things of the like, maybe potentially looking at adding a new board and commission uh, that's focused on innovation, uh, that just kind of looks at things, you know, forward looking, what's on the forefront, things that we as a community might want to look to implement on a broader scale in terms of how we innovate for the City of Farmers Branch. Uh, I'd also like to talk about forming kind of a DART subcommittee uh, with city liaison, council member, two staff members, um, and kind of meet quarterly uh, with DART, uh, the director, uh, to kind of just further understand what's going on with there, what changes, uh, things that are impacting not only Farmers Branch, but the DART system as a whole, um, as we are uh, a part of that. And then uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and announce uh, the mayor's task force for the red, white, and blue ribbon committee as we look to plan the Veterans Day event for 2022. Uh, kind of the thoughts behind this is just to, you know, look at how we can <clears throat> improve that event uh, just for next year, uh, first and foremost, put it back on Veterans Day, November 11th, uh, 2022, which will be a Friday, uh, looking at appointing honorary <coughs> initial chair, Marie Bird. Uh, but additionally, we'll bring in one community rep, a senior advisory board member, police rep, fire rep, uh, someone from the school district, both CFBI, SD, and Brookhaven, uh, the Farmers Branch Rotary, Farmers Branch Chamber, uh, staff liaison, uh, and just form a full committee that starts planning this now so that uh, we can give that uh, celebration uh, the service it deserves so uh, you know just want to go ahead and, and announce that and let you know that we'll be getting that together and in, in a group as, as that moves forward as we look towards next year uh, councilmember Rotana do you have anything uh, no I do not have anything at this time thank you councilmember Williams I do not councilmember Lynn councilmember Merrick uh, just two if I may uh, building on your comment on the innovation commission uh, how far, what's the scope of that at this particular time? Is that just an idea? It's a, an idea that brings in, you know, is it smart city? Is it other stuff that... So is it planning based? Planning based. Other efficiencies and you know, and I'm going back to a, a spot. The, well, the, the broader conversation will happen around it after we have some of the discussion at the strategy session. Perfect. Come back okay. and talk about what that could look like and if That's we fine. even want to move forward with it. That'll, that'll be fine. I appreciate that. I think that would touch on so many different topics that they're all related and tied together. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. That's fine. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I just have one, and that would be uh, I'd like to put together uh, a discussion about the city's website. I'm getting a number of uh, citizens' calls about the website, and we've had it up now in its new form for, I believe, now somewhere in a year, a half a year, thereabouts, correct me if I'm wrong with my timing, uh, opportunity to look at some feedback, um, some ways that we can improve that, uh, and look at some opportunities for uh, how we can get better information out there um, and easier to find. Okay. That, that's the biggest one that I'm hearing. It's hard to find. Things. Gotcha. Okay. That's where I'm Yes, I had one question on your proposal about or talking about the mayor red, white, and blue uh, committee for the veterans, mm -hmm. veterans day. Did you of the different constituencies you mentioned? Did you also mention uh, veterans participation? They will be a part of the individuals from these groups. So the idea would be to reach out to people within, you know. Is there a veteran in the fire department? Is there a veteran in the police department? Is there a veteran in the community that these people are helping coordinate and plan <coughs> this event? Because uh, okay. it's something that should mean a little bit more. To yeah, you. because on that topic, I mean, uh, I was at the event and you know introduced uh, color guard, etc. And I know quite a few veterans here and got a lot of feedback on that event before and after. And I think it'd be good if we could reach out uh, to just also some you know citizen veterans that you know, they wouldn't be a part of kind of a... Yeah, the goal is to have community mentioned. representatives, which yeah. would be resident yeah. liaisons. Yeah. So, I know. Okay. I think that's important. Uh, and then just for future events, I mean, you know, the ones I've been talking about <laughs> this year or last year, and uh, and then we're going to get to those in January. I would just like to have a discussion at some point down the road on the Burke Nature Preserve and a little bit fuller discussion about the plans for that and the timing uh, and building out, you know, the park, the infrastructure, everything that's there. I think it's a very underutilized and still a very unknown asset in the city. Uh, it just still amazes me. You know, I mentioned that, well, I've gone there, I'm going there. People go, oh, what's that? Where is that? Never heard of it. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Cool. Next, uh, I'll read in executive session B1. Council may convene into a closed executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.072, deliberation of real estate, sale of city-owned properties located at 2563 Wasina, 2568 Greenhurst, 2629 Squire Place, 2646 Greenhurst, and 2560 Wicker, Farmers Branch, Texas, for development of workforce housing. 
discuss the purchase, exchange, lease, or sale of real property north of Farmers Branch Lane, east of I-35, west of Tom Field, and south of Squire Place. We will recess for five minutes. The time is now 4 Thanks.